This is VOA News. I'm Steve Karish. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi voiced his support for peace efforts in Ukraine during a phone conversation with Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky. The phone call between the Indian and Ukrainian leaders came 10 days after Modi's phone conversation with Russian leader Vladimir Putin, in which New Delhi said Modi spoke of the need for dialogue and diplomacy to end the conflict. This, as the Ukrainian foreign minister has proposed a UN-moderated summit in February. Foreign companies have welcomed China's decision to end quarantine for travelers from abroad, but the move is not without its costs or its critics. Karen Chamas has the story. The news of further easing of restrictions was welcomed by foreign companies who see the move as an important step to revive slumping business activity. Business groups had warned China the strict quarantine measures was shifting business away from China because foreign executives were blocked from visiting. However, the abrupt U-turn by the government has left hospitals flooded with feverish, wheezing patients as the virus spreads. Architect Lu Haoming believes the easing of restrictions could have been handled better. Hospitals are full of people, and the emergency rooms are full of patients who are not being attended to. So this is a problem. The government should have done the job in a more meticulous way. I'm Karen Chamas. Jailed, former South Korean President Lee Myung-bak received a presidential pardon Tuesday, cutting short his 17-year sentence on corruption charges, the justice minister said. The 81-year-old Lee is serving time for bribery and embezzlement. He was charged in 2018. He was the former CEO of Hyundai, charged with 16 criminal allegations. You're listening to VOA News. Taiwan will extend compulsory military service from four months to one year in 2024. The move comes as China ramps up military, diplomatic and economic pressure on Taiwan. Beijing maintains its claim that Taiwan is part of China. On Tuesday, Israel's parliament passed controversial legislation paving the way for the return of veteran conservative Benjamin Netanyahu as prime minister. Netanyahu will lead what analysts have said will be the most right-wing government in Israel's history. The legislation passed allows anyone convicted of offenses but not given a custodial sentence to serve as minister. Before the law passed, there had been uncertainty over whether Arya Derry, a key ally from the ultra-Orthodox Shah's party, would be able to serve as he had previously pled guilty to tax offenses. Pushback and condemnation against the Taliban's ban on women working at non-governmental organizations in Afghanistan continues to be strong. Ed Donahue has the story. Foreign aid groups are suspending operations in Afghanistan following a decision by the Taliban to ban women from working at international and local non-government organizations. The Taliban alleges women in groups like Care, Save the Children, and Neil Turner's Norwegian Refugee Council weren't wearing the Islamic headscarf correctly. We have complied with all cultural norms, and we simply can't work without our dedicated female staff. Turner says the timing of this ban is very bad. When the economy of Afghanistan is collapsing and we need women as part of the workforce to enable the economy to recover. Women have also been banned from universities in Afghanistan. I'm Ed Donahue. On Tuesday, the United Nations Refugee Agency urged countries to help Rohingya Muslims stranded at sea as at least 20 have reportedly died and hundreds more landed in Indonesia after weeks of drift in the Indian Ocean. Nearly 500 Rohingya have reached Indonesia in the past six weeks. The UNHCR has said that 2022 could be one of the deadliest years at sea in almost a decade for the Rohingya, with a growing number of them fleeing from desperate conditions in refugee camps in Bangladesh. One boat carrying 180 people is believed to have sunk in early December, with all on board presumed dead. The death toll from Christmas Day rains in southern Philippines has risen to 13, authorities said Tuesday, with the search still on for 23 more as floods have started to recede. Most of the deaths were caused by drowning from flash floods after two days of heavy rains forced more than 45,000 people to take shelter. You're listening to VOA News. I'm Steve Karish. 
please subscribe, like, or comment. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, or subscribe.